It is very prevalent in many, many of the websites that when we talk about uh, a stronghold, they consider it that a demon is in your mind, that a demon is in your mind and the demon is the one that is controlling your, the way you think and the way you act. Like, you know, they call it like, like a demon possession in your mind. Okay? But I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm not talking about that you have a demon uh, living inside your mind, a, a mind possession of a demon. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, yeah, the, the influence of Satan. Yes, the influence of Satan using different means, but not that you are possessed with a demon in your mind, okay? Not like that. Okay, and also, I want you to understand that there's two kinds of strongholds, okay? There's two kinds of strongholds. You already know the meaning of a stronghold, the characteristics of a stronghold, of the demonic stronghold, but also you have to understand that we're talking about two kinds of strongholds. The first one, the one that we've been covering, is the demonic stronghold. The beliefs and thoughts that are not according to God's truth, okay? Because they've been influenced by Satan using the world, using you know, everything that is in the world, music, uh, literature, movies, uh, society, friends, all that comes from, from really the, the ruler of this world, which is Satan. So, beliefs and thoughts that are not according to God's truth, that's a demonic stronghold. And when that belief, that thought is already there in your life, controlling you, controlling you. That belief, you keep repeating that action over and over and over and over again. So that's a, a demonic stronghold because it, it has overpowered you, okay? Overpowered you. You keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it, even though sometimes you say, well, I wish I could stop, but you're being overpowered back and back again. So, and, and the second one, it's a divine stronghold. A divine stronghold is also beliefs and thoughts that are according to God's truth, okay? And that's what we also call um, um, convictions, okay? Convictions. When you, when you have a conviction, then you're going to Remain true to that conviction because a conviction means that you are 100% sure that that is true. Okay, so it's a conviction. So, you, so we have these two kinds of strongholds: the demonic and the divine. Okay, and the best way to understand the difference between the two, and, and also to understand what I'm talking about by by a demonic uh, stronghold. Is by illustrating it this way, okay? Let's come back to the case that I just barely mentioned last week. Um, let's think about um, uh, a good Christian man, any one of you, okay? That uh, is experiencing a financial crisis because of uh, unemployment reasons. He's been unemployed for a long time, and uh, now he is in a real financial crunch, okay? So now a, a door opens, and he gets a job as a cashier. Just think about that. You are in a real financial crisis, and now you are a cashier. Okay, so after a while, Satan is going to come. Okay? And Satan comes and tempts him, you know, with an idea, good? with a good reasoning. Because remember, those strongholds are reasonings, are reasoning, telling him, get some dollars from there. Hmm? Get some dollars. The owner is making a lot of money, and he's not paying you enough. He's not paying you enough, and you are in great need. So help yourself. 
Come on, there's nothing wrong. He's using you and abusing you. He's not paying you enough. And look at all the money that he's making. He even has money to go on vacations and to buy a Jaguar and everything. And look at you. Not being even able to pay the electricity. Come on, get some money. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just divine justice. Divine justice. Okay? So... The enemy plays a good argument in his mind, okay? But contrary to what he knows about God's will, how is he going to respond? How do you think he's going to respond? Okay, there's three options, okay, that are going to help us understand these two things about the, the two kinds of strongholds. There's three options. The first one, the first option is to be Obedient to Satan's arguments, okay? Because remember, it says we demolish arguments and every arrogant reasoning that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, okay? So he, this person, he is uh, accepting the arrogant reasoning, the arguments from Satan. And they are called arrogant reasoning because, you know, they set itself up against the knowledge of God. That means that they consider themselves superior or better than the truth of God. Okay? So now, he accepts the arguments. And in his reasoning, there's nothing wrong. This is just divine justice, what I'm doing. I'm getting money to help myself because, look... It's very sad to see my children in need and my wife worry and I'm not able to pay the basics. And this men on vacations and all that. So he takes the money. But, you know, he's a Christian. The Holy Spirit comes into his conscience and he feels really bad about that to the point that he repents and he says, I'm not going to do it anymore. I repent. And he prays and he asks the Lord for forgiveness and he doesn't do it anymore. Okay. It was just one episode, one time of weakness, but that's it. Okay. Now, the second option. He believes Satan's arguments Okay, and in his reasoning, everything is fine. He's just divine justice. So he takes money. You know, he feels bad, but he takes the money and he keeps doing it. And every time that he keeps doing it, every time less guilt comes to his conscience and less guilty he feels and he keeps doing it because... No, there's nothing wrong, and look, he's helping me pay uh, my back payments on my mortgage and, and my car and my insurance and this and that. So, you know, I'm getting better. My wife is at ease. Oh, I'm glad that now we're able to pay, make payments. And my kids, I was able to buy clothes and shoes and all that. So there's nothing wrong. So keeps, he keeps doing it and keeps doing it and keeps doing it. Now, we have a, a, a third option, option number three, okay? From the very beginning that the argument, Satan's argument, come to his mind. Go ahead, there's nothing wrong. It's just divine justice. Look at yourself, look at your situation. From the very beginning, he obeys God's will. And he says, nope, I know I've been tempted, but I'm not going to do it because I, I'm going to trust in God. God is going to provide for me, and I don't know why he's allowing this to come to my life, but I'm going to obey the Lord. He doesn't go for the argument, okay? He doesn't go for Satan's argument. He doesn't go for the reasoning, okay? So now, the question is, which option is evidence of having a demonic stronghold? Which option is evidence of having a demonic stronghold. Number two, 
Okay, we have number two, number two. Okay, number two. Okay. Remember what was number two? <laughs> Only the young can remember, guys. <laughs> Do you remember? Okay, he's right. Number two is the only one that shows that you have a stronghold. Why? Because he continued doing it, continued doing it. And even though he felt that, and he knew that it was wrong, and he felt uh, that it was not God's will what he was doing, he just kept doing it, and he was overpowered by the argument, by the logic. And remember, that's what it is, a stronghold. Uh, it's arguments. Arrogant reasoning, like, well, you know, uh, I don't care what God says, but, you know, I already figured this out, and there's nothing wrong, because uh, this is my situation, and this and that. So that's the arguments, the arrogant reasons, the, uh, the thoughts that we have, okay? So, number two shows that he has, that he has already allowed Satan to establish a stronghold in his mind. And now Satan is overpowering him. Now Satan has control because that's the characteristic of a, a stronghold that uh, who is controlling you. Okay. Now, uh, the other question, which option of the three that I presented is evidence of having a divine stronghold? Okay, a divine stronghold. Which one? What, four? Okay, <laughs> all right. What did you say? Three. Three. And oh, these guys are smart. Okay, they said one and three. Okay. Yeah, and especially number three, that from the beginning, he said, nope, nope, because he had a real strong conviction, and that real strong conviction, it's a divine uh, stronghold where now the truth of God is protecting him and giving him victory. You see the difference between a demonic and a divine? It's a matter of who's controlling you, okay? It's a matter of who is overpowering you. Mm -hmm. Is the good demonic argument controlling you? Or is it the better divine argument controlling you? Mm -hmm. That's the question that makes a difference between a demonic and a divine stronghold. See? And that's, you know, what the Bible says. See? that So... When I show you this illustration, it's not that we're saying that demons are entering into your mind and that now you are demon mind possessed. No, it's just an illustration about how Satan works in our minds. So we're talking about thoughts, philosophies, ideas, arguments that are contrary to the Word of God and that are controlling our, our behavior, our feelings, our actions, okay? That's what we are talking about, okay? But it says, the Apostle Paul said, I use guiding mighty weapons, not those made, made by men, to knock down the devil's strongholds, okay? So this is what we are going through. We're looking at those mighty weapons that God has given us. Okay, so in this process of breaking through strongholds, you know, I've been telling you that it's going to require work from you, okay? And the very first thing is to believe that, that your stronghold or strongholds can be demolished, okay? That they can be demolished, and you have to believe that because one of the goals of a demonic stronghold is to bring down your hope, your faith, so that you won't Believe that you can overcome that so that you can just give up. Okay? So that's why this is very important to truly believe that. Okay? If that identify your stronghold, make sure you identify that. You know, that's been your homework 
to do it during the week, to really get into your notes and pray and allow the Holy Spirit to show you your stronghold or your strongholds. Number three, confess to the Lord your strongholds. Once you identify them, bring them to the light, confessing them to the Lord, not excusing them. Okay? Excuses are not confession. Okay? If you excuse it, you continue to give power to Satan, to demons, to continue to control your, that area of your life in your mind, okay? Cut and blockade the supply source of the stronghold. That's why you were supposed to, to find, find, it, find it out. This, the supply source that I need to cut is, did you do it? That was your homework for the last week. Did you do it? Okay, did you do it? All right, and then number five, we cover establish a base camp of friends, warriors, okay? And, and then I, I, I told you, look, if, if you have friends, because there's a difference. You know, we are brothers and sisters here in the church, right? But that doesn't mean that we are all friends, right? It doesn't mean that. You know, and you, when, you, when you read the Bible and, and you see the, the, the meaning of a friend, it says that a friend is willing to give his life for you, for his friend. Okay? All right, so that's, that's the way. So now, when, when you have a friend or friends, then you can trust them that you know, whatever you share... With them, whatever you are asking them to help you with, with one of your weaknesses, you know that it's going to remain there. Because he is or she is a real friend. Okay? A real friend. Just remember the joke about the pastors, the ministers that got together? Okay, so it's a warning. Don't do that because if you don't trust a person, then... It can backfire when you open up with somebody, okay? You open up with somebody and that somebody is going to, in an hour, is going to be in Facebook, everything. <laughs> Twitter and all the internet. No? You don't remember that joke? Come on. I said it in Spanish, not in English? Oh. Huh? Okay, well, all right, but but I was not involved in that okay situation. That's a clarification, first of all, because there were three pastors that got together. Okay, it was a, 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 a well, let's say a, a Methodist pastor, a Presbyterian pastor, and the Catholic priest. <laughs> okay, they, because the, the churches were very close together. So one time they got together and said, "Hey, you know, we're neighbors here, and we know." We are for the same thing, for the kingdom of God. So let's get together and help each other. See, we know that we have weaknesses. So let's pray for each other. Let's, you know, establish a base camp among us and, and help each other with our weaknesses. Yeah, that's a good idea. We can come every week and pray for and, and, and see how we're doing with our weaknesses. So, brother, what is your weakness? Ah. My brother is one of the pastors. Said, hey, my weakness is ladies. Ladies is my weakness, and I don't know, but you know, I've been unfaithful to my wife this many times, and, and I, I hate it. But that's my weakness. And then the other pastor said, "And you, brother? Well, you know, my weakness is money. I can't stop it." Every time, every Sunday, I have to get the larger bills. The larger bills, they have to be mine. And I, I don't want to do it, but I keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And you, brother, the last one, what, what is your weakness? Oh, my great witness is gossiping, and I'm <laughs> anxious to go out and tell everyone what's going on here with you guys. <laughs> So you see, you, you be careful with this, okay? Be careful because you might be trusting a person that 
As soon as you finish opening up, it's already all over the internet, okay? Because you have seen those that are with the telephone posting everything. Now I'm breathing. Now I'm... <laughs> everything is there, okay? So, that's important. Now, number six, and that's new one, okay? The other ones we already cover up to five. Number six, okay? Uh, what do you think are those two W's that you have there in your outline? All right, wage war against the stronghold, okay? Wage war. Now, the other, the other ones were like defensive, but now you are going on the offensive, okay? Now you're going to wage war. And how, you're a soldier, right? How do you wage war? What do you use to wage war? Whew, the sword. And what is the sword for us? Hmm? The word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The Bible says it is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 17. Notice here. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay? Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, why we wage war with the Word of God? Why? Against a demonic stronghold. Because a demonic stronghold is a lie, right? And the Word of God is what? The truth. So we need to wage war with the truth to overcome a lie that we are convinced or that, it, it, that we are convinced that it is truth. See, that's the problem of a stronghold, that we are convinced that there's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. There's nothing wrong. I'm already convinced of that. That's why I keep doing it. You see, that's why I keep doing it, because I have already convinced myself, and I have always defended that stronghold. So now I need something very powerful, hmm? something that is supernatural, that can demolish that lie that has been erected like a castle, a stronghold. Hmm? Now I need superpower, God's power, to demolish stronghold, okay? Notice here in Jeremiah 23, 29, it says, okay, and this is the Lord speaking, he's, he's saying, is not my word like fire? Yes or no? Declares the Lord. And, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? You see, that's why we have to wage war to that Stronghold with the Word of God because the Word of God is like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces, hmm? demolishing strongholds. Okay, and what how do we have to use the Word of God? Okay, see, because we're talking about waging war, and so we have to. Use the Word of God. So how are we going to use the Word of God? Just carrying the Word of God or buying a good Bible? Say, oh yeah, I'm going to order a good Bible, a good study Bible. Okay? Is that all? No, there are many things. See, uh, I've been telling you several of them, but now I added another one that is very necessary for waging war against a stronghold. Read the Word. Okay, remember? Secondly, study the Word. Okay, what was number three? Who remembers? Meditate the word. Okay, meditate the word. Memorize the word. What's number five? Hmm? That's, that's going to be number six now. Okay. Number five, pray the word. Okay, pray the word. Hmm? And number six, obey the word. Okay? So you see, this is what you need in order to demolish a stronghold, to bring down an argument. Okay? Because you, you have to believe that it's very powerful. That argument is very powerful. 
And you're going to need all that. You're going to need to read the Word, study the Word, meditate the Word, memorize the Word, pray the Word, obey the Word. Okay? Can you do that? No, Pastor. Are you crazy? I work. I work. I go to school. And then I come to school and I have to do homework. How do you want me to do all that? So you don't want to destroy the, uh, the, your stronghold? You want to... Because if that's our mentality, we are defending the stronghold. You see, there are many ways that we can protect it and defend it. And that's one of the ways of saying, I don't have time to do all that. Okay, you are defending it and you are protecting it and you want to keep it there. You see? That's one way that you are being deceived by the deceiver into not demolishing it. I'm not going to demolish it because I don't have the time. So it's more important to watch TV. Because just one program of TV takes the time of doing this. Just one program. Hmm? One program. It could be news, it could be sports, it could be a, a funny program or whatever program. Hmm? It just takes to change and say, okay, I'm not going to watch this program and I'm going to do this. Okay? Do you think you can do that? When you say yes, it's because you really want to destroy the stronghold. But when you say, I'm not sure I have the time, you are defending and protecting the stronghold. Okay? And you see in Song 3 it says, They all handle the sword and are expert in war. Every man has his sword at his side, guarding against the terrors of night. Okay? So we can, we can use it because it's, it's used both ways, literally and uh, applying to the spiritual life. The, the same way that a warrior, that he, he wants to be victorious. You see, because when you go to war, you don't go with the idea, well, maybe they're going to kill me today. You go with the idea, hey, I'm going to be in guard and I'm going to do everything that I've been trained to do and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. I'm going to survive this day. Okay, Today I'm going to survive. You talk to any soldier and that's what they, they've been in the front. They, they, that's their mentality. Okay, I'm going to kill, but I'm not going to let them kill me. Okay, I'm not going to let them kill me. So that should be our attitude also and say, hey, I'm going to handle the sword. What is the sword? The Word of God. The Word of God. I'm going to handle the sword. I'm going to become an expert at war. Okay? At spiritual warfare. I'm going to become an expert. An expert on, on everything that we just went through. I'm going to read the Bible. I'm going to be an expert on studying the Bible and meditating, memorizing, praying, and obeying the Word of God. Every man has his sword at his side. It's going to be, the Word of God is going to be always on my side. Guarding me against the terrors of the night. Okay? Temptation and the stronghold that comes and wants to overpower you. That should, you should see it like a terror. A dark terror that comes upon you and wants to bring you down. Because what's going to happen? Every time that we fail and we are overcome by that stronghold, our faith, our hope becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. Is that what you want? Or you want to become stronger and stronger in your faith and in your hope? That's the thing that we need to understand that it's a reality. It is a reality. Okay? That's why in 2 Timothy we have do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Okay? That's, that's the meaning of handles. It's the idea of handling the, the, the sword as a warrior. So now, you know, you're not ashamed because you know 
that you are a warrior, that you know how to handle the sword, okay? The same way spiritually. Or do you feel ashamed and say, oh, I, 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 don't, I, can, I don't even know where, where Malachi is in the Bible. I don't even know the, the books of the Bible. I don't know how to find a, 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 a subject, a passage. If I want to find a verse, I don't even know how to do it. So I just forget and I don't read the Bible because I don't know. Are you feel ashamed that you don't know how to handle the sword? Hmm? See, and that's what we're doing on, on Wednesdays. The Wednesday that we come with the kids, we're teaching them how to handle the sword. So bring your kids. If you don't want to come, just bring your kids. We need a new generation. We need a new generation of Christians that truly desire to know the Lord and to love the Lord and to handle the word of truth like this, correctly handling the word of truth because it is sad to see a Christian year after year after year after year and not knowing how to handle the word of truth. Not knowing. Not waging war. And see them stuck there. Why? Because the stronghold remains there. So they're stuck. You want that for your kids? Bring them on Wednesdays. And you, if you don't want to stay here for the sessions of questions and answers, go to McDonald's or go any place you want. But bring your kids. So handle, handling the word of truth. Okay? Have you heard about John Bunyan? He was a pastor and, and a writer. Like, like in the times of Brother Iram, approximately. <laughs> He's the one that wrote, you know, the most famous book is Pilgrim's Progress. It's a classic. It's beautiful. Pilgrim's Progress. You can watch the movie on, for free on YouTube. Pilgrim's Progress, in Spanish and in English. And I advise you to watch that movie, okay? Because he was put in jail because of preaching the Word of God. And he wrote that allegory of the life of a Christian that we are like a pilgrim going through this life, Pilgrim's Progress. And he presents the different situations that we experience here on earth. But you know how he wrote the book there in prison? With his blood. That was his ink that he used. Because God was giving him the analogy and he wanted, he was desperate to, and with his blood he wrote it. And you know, Charles Spurgeon, this is what he said about John Bunyan. Okay? says, if you cut him, if you cut John Bunyan, if you make a cut, he would bleed scripture. <laughs> he would bleed scripture. Do you want that for you? Do you want that for you? Bleed scripture? To really fulfill God's will. That God says that the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly, the word of God dwelling you richly. For that, you're going to have to do that. Okay? You're going to have to do the six things. Read, study, meditate, memorize, pray, and obey the word of God. And you're going to bleed scripture. Okay? So let's go one by one. Okay? One by one. Because I want to make it practical and give you ideas. Because what we want to do is learn how to do spiritual battle. Okay, so the first one that we're looking, read the word. Okay, now notice here, this is by Dwight L. Moody, another preacher from Iran's time. It says, sin will keep you from the book, or the book will keep you from sin. You see? Do you understand that thought? So which one do you rather have? Be and that's what Satan, remember, he's a liar, 
So he may convince you that you are very busy, that you don't have time to get into the Bible. Because he knows that as long as he keeps you away from the Bible, it's going to be easier for you to fall into sin. But if you get into the Bible, he knows that the Bible is going to keep you from sin. So you see the difference? So that's why it's so important to be in the Word of God. And now, in this context that we are now studying about, I want to break down, I want to demolish, I want to destroy my stronghold. So you're going to read the Word of God, but related to your stronghold. Look up verses that has to do with your stronghold. Look them up. It's, now it's very easy to do that. Okay? We have, we, you can Google that. You can, oh, so many things that you can do to go to Bible Gateway and, and look for keywords. Or, uh, and it's going to give you all kinds of verses related to that word that you are searching for. So related to your stronghold. Okay? For example, we all have uh, a weakness that, that is very controlling. Okay? And we know that extroverts, they have a weakness that is very controlling. And introverts, we have another weakness. Okay? What is the weakness of the extroverts, the, melanch the, the cholerics and the sanguines? What is the, that weakness that controls them? Remember? Anger. anger. Okay, anger. And for the introverts, the melancholics and the phlegmatics, what is the weakness? Hmm? Insecurity, fear. Okay, insecurity, fear. All right? So now, I'm going to give you, today I'm going to give you an example on, on how to do it. Let's say you're an introvert. Okay, so you have uh, insecurities that, that are controlling you. Constantly, insecurities, fears. You're fearful, okay? So you look up in the Bible. Like, for example, I found you know, well, a lot of, but I'm just going to show you some verses on, on, on being fearful. It says in Isaiah 51, 12, The Lord says, I am the one who comforts you. So why should you be afraid of people? They are only humans who live and die like the grass. Because a person that is insecure is afraid of people. That's why, oh, I don't want to ask him. Go, you go and ask or you call. Or, you know, that kind of insecurity is because you're afraid of people. And then the Lord is telling you, but why? They're just like you. Why be afraid? So when you are doing your spiritual battle related to your weakness, to your sin, now you focus on, on, on passages that had to do with that so that you can meditate on them and say, hmm, what is the Lord teaching me here? Why should I be afraid? And, and you know, I discover that, that I'm really afraid of people. I have never thought about that, that it is people that I'm afraid of. Why? Should I, maybe I see them like superior and I see myself like inferior or, you know, you start meditating and allowing the Holy Spirit to teach you to think about the subject because now you're using the Word of God, God's wisdom to give you insight into your problem, okay? And the Holy Spirit is going to give you insight into your problem, okay? So now you're meditating another verse. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. Okay, so you start also meditating. And every time that you're doing this, while you're meditating, you're journaling. Okay, that's why I keep telling you, your devotionals, you journal, you write down what the Lord is teaching you. Okay, you write down what the Lord is teaching you. Wow, you, now you, you, you're meditating on this verse. Fearing people is dangerous trap. Why? Wow, I never thought about that I was doing something dangerous, spiritually dangerous, and also dangerous in my daily life because I'm missing a lot of things because I'm not doing many things because of fear. So you start thinking and meditating about that. 
So now what is it that I also learned from this verse? That my fear of people means that I'm not trusting in the Lord. I'm not trusting in the Lord. I'm trusting more in me and I see my weaknesses and I see myself as inferior and that's why I experience this overpowering feeling of fear that doesn't allow me to, to go and ask for a job or do this or ask for a raise or whatever thing. Because I'm very fearful. Because I don't trust the Lord. And, and, and you start thinking and meditating and journaling, writing down. You know, remember, we're talking about doing warfare, okay? You want to really destroy a stronghold, okay? And you got to really be honest in, in following this process. If you really want to bring it down, it is a process that you have to go through and be really into it, into it like at war, that you focus on destroying your enemy as soon as possible. You don't want to give him any opportunity. You want to destroy him. Okay, another verse in John. It said, But they were afraid of the Pharisees. Okay? So they did not say openly that they believed, that they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't say they, they believed Jesus. They loved praise from people more than praise from God. So, you, you start meditating then, and you say, oh, how come I have this strong feeling of wanting to be accepted by others, to be seen as acceptable, as good? Why? It's overpowering me to the point that I'm not doing the right thing. I'm not being honest just because of my fear. So, so you start journaling, meditating, okay? Because later on, you're, you can use all that to pray. Use it as your prayer guide. Hmm? So you journal. You journal everything that God is teaching you and he's telling you, okay? So journal what God is showing you, right? Buy a journal, buy a book, whatever, a notebook, whatever. But... Journal it. The more disciplined that you are, the better it's going to be. Because a soldier, is, that's you know, the characteristic of a soldier, discipline. Okay? Discipline. So you discipline yourself. Okay? Now, what's next? This is about reading the Word of God. Okay? Now, what's next? Number two. You read the Word of God and then you what? Study the Word of God. Okay? So how are you going to study the Word of God? Okay, you need Bible commentaries. It is sad that many Christians have been Christians for many years and they don't have a Bible commentary. Hmm? Not, a, not one Bible commentary. You should begin, I always tell them, begin with just a, a one volume Bible commentary. Hmm? It is, it's going to give you a, a brief commentary, explanation of each verse of the Bible, but it's going to be brief. Okay? But it's, it's a good beginning hmm? before you continue expanding your Christian library. Hmm? You start expanding little by little, little by little, as you know, and you learn how to study and how to use them and all that. But you need to study. Okay? You need to study. Now, our modern Christianity, the only ones that need to study are the ones that are teaching. Only Sunday school teachers, um, if you have a, uh, like a cell group at home and you are teaching a certain subject, you know, that's the person that, he has, that has to study. The pastors, they have to study. But the rest, no, we don't have to study. That's new. Because... The, the previous generation of Christians, they were all studying the scripture seriously. Even little kids were studying. Kids were studying, reading commentaries. Remember that I mentioned, I mentioned, uh, uh, what was the name of this 
pastor that I mentioned. Uh, well, one of the ones that I mentioned. <laughs> okay. but, but by the age of 10, he had already read most of the theological commentaries of his day. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Hmm. So, study the word. Buy commentaries. Okay? Uh, use online Bible because he said, well, I don't have money, Pastor. Okay, if you have uh, uh, internet access, you can go and, and find online Bible. Just go to Bible Gateway and, and then you're, you're you're reading a verse, and then you have an option of commentaries that are going to help you with explanation, and it's going to give you a list like of five different commentaries that you can use, hmm? and dictionaries that you can use for words that you don't understand, okay? And it's free. You don't have to buy it. It's just free. You can use it, okay? So go. Like, also, Google Bible verses, keywords, they're going to come up. Okay? Now, read a book related to your stronghold. Remember that you're doing spiritual battle and you want to bleed Scripture, right? You want the Word of God to dwell richly in you. So now, read books related to your stronghold. Like right now, what is the example that we are looking? Okay? Fear, right? Insecurity, fear. There are many good books. For example, this is a good book. When people are big and God is small. Excellent book. Hmm? Real good. Deals with that, that problem of insecurities, hmm? fear of people. That's why the title, when people are big, you see them, oh no, I don't want to. And God is small. In reality, you're not trusting in God. Hmm? Another book. By Charles Stanley, Emotions. And, and he deals here with insecurities, with fears. Mm -hmm. That's what he is dealing with. Another book by Beth Moore. So long insecurity. Okay, Bye-bye insecurity. No more. So that's, that's what they're going to teach you. You know, that you can overcome like like she overcame insecurity, we can overcome insecurity if that's our problem. Okay? But we need to really believe it and trust it and do the spiritual battle. Do the spiritual battle. Okay? Ah, oh, Pastor, I, I don't have time to read a book. You want me to, to read the Word, study, meditate, memorize, pray, and, and now a book? Come on, Pastor. Once again, we are living in modern times. Okay, I know we're all busy. What do I do? I buy my books with audio. And when I'm mowing the grass, doing things, doing that, washing the car, I'm listening to a book. Hmm? I'm listening to a book. Whatever I'm doing, I'm traveling, I'm listening to a book. Hmm? But I'm not going to use excuses. Because there are no excuses in reality, especially for us modern Christians. No excuses at all. You can listen to a book, okay? Now, number three, meditate. Meditate the Word of God. That means go back and meditate on the Bible verses and your journal notes, okay? Now you're going to meditate because what's the meaning of meditation, okay? The meaning is to think Calmly, deeply, carefully, and thoroughly about something. Okay? That's the meaning of meditation. And it's important because it's just going to go deep into your heart. Hmm? Deep into your heart. When you meditate, that's when you are in the process of making that truth a conviction. Hmm? So you are making that truth a uh, divine stronghold. You're making it a divine stronghold by meditating. Because now you're allowing for that truth to go down and sink into your heart. Now it's a conviction. Now it's a divine stronghold. Okay? 
What is the meaning of meditation? To plan in the mind to consider or think of doing something. You see? So now when you're meditating, now you're considering in your mind, now this is why, what I'm supposed to be doing. God is giving you insight on how to do, what to do, and how to do it. Okay? So that's why it's so important to take time, see, to think calmly and deeply and carefully. Nowadays, we don't want to do that, okay? We use all kinds of excuses. Pastor, you know, when I read, you know, I read like half a page, and then I, I notice that I don't remember nothing that I read. Because you're not meditating. If that's your problem, your solution is meditating. Read a statement and meditate on it. Okay? Meditate on it. Just read a statement. And little by little, you're going you're gonna to be exercising to remember what you are reading. But meditation is going to help you overcome that weakness. Okay? So meditate. Meditate. What's the next one? Memorize the word, okay? Memorize the word. When you memorize the word, you're bringing the truth of God into your mind. And so what's going to happen with the lie that is there, with the stronghold that is there, when you are now bringing the word, the truth into your mind, you're going to begin like a hammer, like the Bible says, pa, 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 and hammering with God's power, that those walls and they're going to crumble, crumble. Sooner or later, they're going to fall down. Okay? But look, let me give you an advice about memorizing. Okay? It is here. It says, um, read it ten times. Okay? You want to memorize a verse? You read it ten times. And then speak it ten times out loud. You first read it, and then you speak it ten times. And then you write it two times. And it's considered that the average person is going to memorize a verse like that. Okay? Read it ten times, speak it ten times, write it two times. And what's going to happen? It's going to be memorized into your mind. Okay? It's going to go into your mind. Okay? So, do that. And pray the word. Okay? Pray the word. Okay? Pray the passages that you read, study, and meditate on. Just pray. What does the Bible teach us? That if we pray according to His will, what's going to happen? Okay. It's going to come true. God is going to answer our prayer. And what is the easiest and the surest way of praying according to God's will? Praying His word. You pray His Word and you're going to be praying according to His will. Like those verses that we, that we read. Like, like the one that says, uh, Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. So we can just pray, Lord, help me. I don't want to keep fearing people because I know that it's a trap. And I'm already in that trap, and I want to come out of that trap. I want to be, I want to experience freedom and not be afraid of people and fearful of them and with these insecurities. I want to trust in you, Lord, because I know that you're going to lead me to safety. And you see, I'm just saying everything that is there, but now I'm personalizing it. Personalizing. So you do that with the Word of God, and you're praying according to His will. You're praying according to His will. But, but do it. That's part of the war. Okay? Pray the word. Now you have a clearer and deeper understanding so your prayer can be more specific and according to God's will. See? Why? Because now you have all the information that you acquire and that the Lord, the insight that the Lord gave you while reading the scriptures, while studying the scriptures, while meditating on the scriptures and journaling everything in your, by memorizing the scriptures, 
Now, when you pray the scriptures, now your prayer is going to be more biblical, more according to God's will. So you can pray it. And finally, obey the word. Okay, obey the word. Because, like this uh, author, who said it's right on target, obedience is the virtue that determines whether a person is either a servant or a rebel. Or you're either a servant of the Lord or you're going to be in rebellion to the Lord. You see why it's so important now that you went through all the previous five steps, now put it into practice. Put it into practice. Next week, I'm going to give you an example, the same thing, but with the other weakness of the extroverts, anger. Okay? Anger, we're going to go through that. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your patience, Lord, with us, because we know that you've been very good with us. You have given us everything, especially us Christians, in modern times and in this United States of America where we have everything to make it easy and to learn your word and to read it and, and listen to it and study it and meditate everything, Lord. It's very easy and accessible for us. So help us not to believe the deceiver that he's constantly telling us a lie that we don't have time, that it's very difficult, we don't have the money, we don't have the resources, when in reality, you have provided for everything in order for us to be more than conquerors. So help us, Lord, to truly believe that and go through it, breaking through strongholds. We just want to bring honor and glory to you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.